Tonight, it is about the Brothers Code. Whether we get to break it or not, it is up to you at home that would be joining us live on Facebook and every other person in the studio and our counselors to give us suggestions whether we are breaking the code and if it's right for us to break the code along with the family. This is Confessions and you're going to have a swell time. I am seated in the confession seat and he's ready. He says he needs to be a brother and there is a brother's code that cannot be broken. And yet he's worried about some little children who are part of this union. What exactly is he talking about? This is Confessions on TV3 and he's ready to confess and I'm ready to listen. Gentlemen, you're welcome to Confessions. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Share your story, your confession with us. So it's been almost six months now and this is really eating me up. Mm. I decided to go pay my brother a visit. You know, mm. I like to go there, go see my nieces and my nephews. Okay. Have some time with them. Because yeah. my brother and I are very, very close and these kids really, really love it with me around. Mm. What I didn't do this time is I didn't call to tell him I was coming. Okay. I just wanted to show up because mm -hmm. of the kids especially. Mm. When I got there, the garage was locked, so I couldn't tell whether the car was in or whether oh, he had gone out. And because I wanted it to be a surprise, I didn't even bother to knock. Mm. The door was partly opened. Okay. So I just opened and entered mm. the room. I sneaked through to the kids' room. There was no one in there. Okay. So I went upstairs to their bedroom. Okay. And my brother and I are like that. We, some, we sometimes we don't even respect each other's privacy and all. Mm. That's how we've grown to be. And Miss Nancy, when I opened his bedroom door, mm -hmm. this muscular guy, who obviously wasn't my brother, mm -hmm. was humping his wife mm? from behind her. Okay. I don't know whether to call it a surprise or a shock. I stood there for some minutes. Yeah, naturally. Before I shouted the woman's name, for them to realize I was even there. Somebody was there. They were so into it. All I could do was just leave. And right now the problem is, my brother and the wife, are they, they look happy. I can say they are happy, but with what I've seen, mm. I would only say they look happy. Mm -hmm. There's a bro, a bro code, yes, I'll call it a bro code. There's a bro code we, I wouldn't want to break. Mm. We don't keep secrets, From each my other. brother and I. That's what our dad taught us. Mm. Right now, I, I'm thinking what to do. I don't know whether to tell my brother this is what I saw. Mm months ago and knowing my brother he wouldn't take this lightly he yeah. could ask for a divorce immediately and i know mm. how much it could affect the children mm. especially not even the wife yeah i'm in a fix right now mm. whether to keep the bro code and tell him this is what i saw or to help save the marriage by not mentioning anything at all about it Ooh. i'm equally in a fix with you now, if a woman dares to cheat, <laughs> yeah, and she dares to bring another man into her matrimonial bed, and this is a brother that cares about his brother, and then the nephews and the nieces, and he doesn't know. If I tell my brother this is what I saw, the marriage is over, brother may take the children, every child needs their mother around as they grow up. It is messy. Are we telling or we are not? Keeping bro's code? Is it a wise decision as of this time? This is Confessions on TV3. The studio audience are ready. So is my counsellor. Let's get in there and get to working. We are seated and we just experienced the confession from the young man. And it's a brother's thing, so it's all right if a gentleman wants to be the first speaker. Hey, macho man, you look very Ghanaian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Awesome. We're in the month of uh, Ghana, Ghana month. So, of course. So we have to... A touch of Ghana there. Yes, yes, yes. Truly yes, appreciate yes, it. Yes. Let's so, move. Um, uh, the, 
the story is quite intriguing mm -hmm. and most especially since it is his brother blood brother mm -hmm. you know even as friends we can have bro codes mm -hmm. but this one is your blood mm -hmm. so it makes it more intense mm. i would say in my opinion i think he should tell his brother immediately yeah immediately there are children involved yes and i'll come to that Little because nephews and nieces how many Guinean men would say that he didn't even catch you cheating his right. brother did and he may tell the sisters and the other members of the family. You think he can forgive? Well, that will be, that will be left with the man, last in the husband. Because after, assuming I tell the man, I tell my brother, it will be up to my brother to, to, to take the next action. action yeah, sorry. and if the action is going to break the family, are you thinking about the children growing up in a broken home? Well, Miss Knight, people are, people are actually adjusting now. People, I've seen people separate and then the man is somewhere, the woman is somewhere, but they are still co, co uh, Yes, um, taking care of the kids. They do their, their bed. So in my opinion, I think the, the man should tell his brother. It is also said that when you want to break a nation, first break the families. And so a broken home eventually brings about a broken nation. Uh, Harris? Yes, Miss Nancy. Yeah. Um, for me, seeing that I wouldn't even shout, he even shouted, I would take pics. You take pictures? Yes. Evidence? Yes. You understand? Because He was shocked. You know when you are really shocked, you cannot think straight? There's nothing new under the sun, Miss Nancy. You should know that this thing normally happens. You shouldn't shout. You should just take pictures. Wait. Meet your brother halfway, somewhere. Go and sit somewhere. Sit him down. Explain everything to him. Tell him that, look, this is, this is what went on. But you can't go home doing this and that. Because there are some men... Immediately they hear it, they will go there and they will do something stupid. Yeah, you cannot, you can never trust anybody on how to behave when they are hurt, when they are disappointed, especially when emotions when are involved. When it's your brother, you can control him. You can tell him things for him to understand that, look, even though you are hurt, this is what's going through your head right now because I know you. I know you're stubborn. You like so this. So you two gentlemen are agreeing that he should go ahead and tell his brother. Yes, even, even if it were to be my friend, I will tell you. Because you're a brother. Wow. Because if I don't tell you, and when, let's say maybe it's me, and you don't tell me, and later I find out that you knew and you didn't tell me, what would I do to you? I would not even keep you as a friend anymore. Thank you. I hope that there is a woman here that wants to speak on behalf of the woman. Yes, my lady. Miss Nancy. Well, hmm, this is a critical issue. Very. Um, how close is the man with his wife? And does he trust her that much? Because right now you don't have evidence. Mm -hmm. You saw with your eyes. Mm -hmm. You didn't take any picture. Mm -hmm. You go forward to tell your brother that this is what I saw. Is he going to believe you? You might be close, but maybe because he loves his wife, he might not believe she's going to do something like that. Yeah. And, and, and for all you know, it's been six months down the line. Six months. And, you and within the period that you didn't talk, the woman has been sowing seeds of this God. Your brother has been looking at my legs. The other time, your brother hit my bum. Your brother... Women can be creative. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. So don't you think that it's too late? I think it's too late. Or probably he could alert his brother that he, um, he should have his eyes on his wife. Eesh. So should something that of that sort happens again, he would find out. Yes. So for you, he shouldn't actually say it, yes. but he should hint. Yeah. I'm great at hinting, you know. <laughs> I, I try not to betray, but I will hint. Hey, I'm, I'm awesome at that one. Esther, did you have something to say? Yes. Hi, Ms. Nancy. Hey. Um, I personally believe that, like Chloe said, an upfront confrontation would not help because there's no proof. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I actually want to find out from the man also that has the woman tried to explain things to him when he chanced okay. upon them having that whatever happening? Because if he is, he can be able to put two and two together. I know that, okay, maybe it was intentional. This woman is actually, she knows what she's doing. And, or he'll come to the knowledge that maybe my brother is doing something that has led her to do that. I'm not justifying that what she did was right, but, but I yeah. feel like I, I, that I, I'm interested in your question. Did, did you help. talk to this woman after this incident? 
I have avoided every chance she tries mm. to use to communicate mm. with me, but she gets very uncomfortable mm -hmm. when we meet. I, I haven't been able to go to the house anymore. I mm -hmm. actually plan not to go there. Mm -hmm. But whenever we meet and I'm around, she gets uncomfortable. And I think my brother is beginning to suspect something. Okay. But that's what's even making it uh, um, eat me up. Because you've been avoiding the whole family. Yes. <laughs> I have heard time and again that instead of telling lies, just do not talk. So he would not go there and talk and not say the truth. So long as he's talking, he's telling the truth. At this point, I think it's a good idea to bring our counselor in, right? Yeah. Let us show her some love. Lady Pasta Ada. Uh, Miss Yellow. <laughs> you look beautiful. Thank Please. You. Learning you. from you. Ah, you look you? beautiful too. Thank you. My lady, you are very welcome to Confessions. Thank you. Your second time and the first time was awesome. And yeah, this is going to be awesome. I pray so too. <laughs> now look at this gentleman that says that my big brother, mm. who is married, living in his family home, mm. we are so close that when I'm going to visit, I do not call. Mm. And when I get to the home, I do not knock. Mm -hmm. And I went downstairs and there was no one there and I went upstairs into his bedroom. Mm. At what point do you let go of all courtesies and mannerisms that you're supposed to extend to people that are married in their own homes? They say, just because he's your brother. Was that right? That is extremely wrong. Honestly, when I heard the confession, those were my first three wrong things I was going to tell you in the mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. No matter how close you are to your sister or your brother, the moment they get Even a married, friend. friend, whatever, the moment they get married, Make a conscious effort to draw that line. Mm -hmm. You can't just pick up your bag and say, I'm going without not informing my brother. Mm -hmm. And when you get into somebody's house, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friend, and their gates are open and unlocked, it's security wise that you, if you can't knock, you can give a voice notification. Mm -hmm. Anybody home? home. There could be a robbery ongoing when? in yeah. there. And you will fall into it. Yes. So you can't just say, I got there, the gates were open, and I got inside. My brother's house. Well, my sister's your house. Your brother's house. The house even belongs to our father, and he willed it to my brother, or willed it to us, and you are married, and you are in there. Mm -hmm. So the person loses every bit of their privacy. Who, who is having a six-month dilemma now? Yes. <laughs> if you jump yes. the courtesy, whatever comes out of it, you blame yourself. Because just maybe, if you had said, it's somebody home, we could have done something. You probably would have seen, but not seen as much as, as you did. saw. Not talking to my brother about something this sensitive mm. that I saw, is that me betraying my brother's trust? Or is me being just smart because I know that the hearts of men, I mean women in this case, are desperately wicked and they can twist and turn things in their favor. After six months, it's been too long. As not telling your brother is not being fair to your own self. Hey. For the scripture says that you love your neighbor as yourself. As if it were to be you, would you want to be in the known? Sometimes, some of us, we don't want to know. So We honestly don't want... You know there are things that you really wish you had not seen. Yeah, but the principle is, is the same. It's just the methodologies that are different. Mm. Principle is that he got to know. But the how he would know, mm. and the when he would know, and the how you communicate the information to him is a responsibility. So you don't just wake up. And, and, and I like the fact that he answered the fact that he's not talking to the woman. Once mm -hmm. you have not listened to the woman, mm -hmm. you can't have entirely how to present it. I heard a young lady say that it could be that um, there's a reason behind what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Now, I have grown to know that you can't just tame every cheater as every cheater. Mm -hmm. Some are under impulse cheating. It's a one-time thing. Some are blackmail to cheat. Some are chronic cheaters, people that it runs in their family. So not every cheater can be condemned? No, until you understand what happens. Ah, this is something I saw with my koro koro eyes. So we are not saying she wasn't cheated. The act 
is there? You saw. What is the reason behind, even if it is a lie, you got to listen. It would inform the methods, the mediums, and how to let your brother know about it. Now, I, I wanted so desperately to think that it could be a black male or um, a once in a lifetime thing, her first time. And listen, if you're doing it for the first time, you don't give controversy left to her. The position the woman was given is an enjoyable one. <laughs> yeah, it's as if you were there. Uh, from what? <laughs> Oh From my what God! He described you. Uh, you have you have also gotten the picture clear. I have a fair he idea. He described it in black and white. And you are giving us the 3D. Oh yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> you know that is why this information should also go straight from the seer to the one it is about. So the, because when you pass on information, it is exaggerated. It is distorted just by this. What I heard and what I'm describing, I added on to it. Exactly. Don't we all agree? Yes. And that is how it is. So like. that's why I said that the principle is that he has to know. Mm. The method could include that letting the wife tell him, mm -hmm. you telling him, mm. family telling him. They are all mediums of letting the person, person know. know. Principle is that he got to the know. The wife telling him in your presence. Not in your presence. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. How do you know she spoke the truth? Well, that would give us a clear evidence if it was um, an impulse cheating, if something that just happened the first time. Because yeah. that will come with remorse. Yeah. That will come with a bit of you know, guilt that is burning you. Because you don't cheat on somebody you love and look into their face every day and smile. You know, it also gives She's us... She's been looking into his face, smiling, feeding him... For the past him, six for months. For the past six months. Does this person look like guilty? So I think that it's because we are only seeing the outer part. We probably never know that when nobody is there, she still locked the door and cry. Mm -hmm. But to gather herself and tell the truth. And sometimes, I still come back to when. There are some confessions that it is easily going to be pardoned maybe when you say it on anniversary days. Hey. Because there are days that means a lot of things to us. So you come tell me on our 15th anniversary that uh, I've been married to you for 15 years, and for all those years I've been just with you. Just last week, this guy was hot. This guy was hot, and I was wondering how it felt like to do it with another person. So, uh? Because we have not understood her reason behind. So everything that we are talking about is an, it, it could be, it is an example that yeah. there are seasons, you should know times and seasons. Yeah. When to say what? It could be anniversary, it could be the person's happy day, it could be that, you know, it's a day of the person's probably, the husband has also oh, done. Probably a Saturday when they the lose day, their beloved. The husband has He's also. crying already so that he has to it. The husband has also probably <laughs> cheated and, you know, maybe yeah. it's a confession day for them at Ooh. home and he comes up and says that, that oh baby nice I, I did this I said worry yourself not I've also done something six months ago and you think that he will forgive you uh, if you don't we are not typical forgiving. Guinean husband my point is that <laughs> it is his reaction we can control yeah but all we are driving is that the information, information has to get to him mm -hmm. and you have to know who we are passing which information to it also informs how we pass it on. And so what we have something called a narrative. Mm. For instance, I, I, it's not going to happen. For instance, I, I meet maybe your husband with another lady. I'm and not married yet. Thank you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just an example. <laughs> and I want to tell you about it. I think that wisdom principle tells me that yeah. um, if I don't know you that much, and even if I think I know you, I should use the narrative. Mm -hmm. And say, oh, hi, Nancy. Charlie, imagine you are married. And one time, B, you are going and you see your friend's, you know, husband with another woman. Do you think it's wise to tell the person? The answer and the story is about me. The answer, yes, the answer is the answer you will give me will, give you will take me back into my wisdom room. It will take me back into my knees. It will take me back into my thinking and say that this will be accurate medium to communicate this fact to this woman. Yeah. So if you haven't tried the narrative, there are some people, they are super blind about their partners. Whatever you say, it's untrue. It couldn't be my wife. Oh, yeah. It couldn't be my husband. Yeah. Why? Because they, they have, yes, they have passed some hallmark test in their mm. life. And some, yes, they know it's true, but there are they not going to agree to you, to what you are saying, because yeah. then they are going to protect their home. Yeah. 
and they are still going to take so, time to so investigate. So there are people that when you give this information to, he will deny, he will tell, he will you, tell you it's not true. It's not my wife. It's not my wife, just so they can keep the relationship. Just the same way you think that the wife will lie, the husband could say it's not my wife. You want to break my home, what are you going to do about wow. it? Have evidence. He can still tell you, that's not my wife. I haven't seen it. I don't want to know it. End up giving you a warning. This should be the very last time Many I hear you say ago, this. years ago, my lady, I heard of a story where a young lady was dating uh, a man, a married man, and the lady went in to tell the, uh, the man that she was pregnant. And the wife called the lady and said, my dear, if you are pregnant, it is your problem. Mm -hmm. My husband and you, he doesn't even know you. So if you want to have a child out of wedlock, it's up to you. My husband, forget about him. He's not responsible for this pregnancy. And the young lady in question knew that it was the husband. There are families like that. They are unhealthily unbreakable. There's also the same scenario where the wife will tell you that, well, you are pregnant, nothing wrong. Please give birth. I will personally help you assist raise the child. I keep my husband. What can you do about it? Yeah. So it's not everybody Nobody that you go tell about their no, partners to them. That they are get and choose. It's somebody that he married with his money. It's somebody he dated for years. And you are not going to have a perfect partner anywhere. So if once in a while, you never know. Again, he's not talking about his brother. What if your brother does worse? I mean, it's a brother It's thing. a what if, yes. Yeah. And so my point is that it has happened. The information has to get to the man. But how? When medium structures the teaser of the man's mentality equally, they are men that when you tell them these things, your brother will be locked in the psychiatric hospital. Oh, yeah. And some can even go on to kill. Some can go to kill. Yeah. So if you don't have a teaser, if you don't have an approach, if you don't know the mental state, the religious state, the physical state of the person you are passing on the information to, you end up being either the good person or the bad person. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. Now to the woman who is cheating. <laughs> My sister, at what point do you cheat in your matrimonial bed? It's, it's when like you, you bring in a man into where you and your husband live, sleep, create, procreate. It's either you're a beginner or you're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in between. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Because if you're a beginner, you were scared that when you step out with the man, other man, somebody will see you and tell your husband about so it. So you feel secure in if your you are, home. Yes. If you're a pro, you don't give a heck. Whoever comes to see you, this is my place. And so if the person is learning on the game, they are still doing the hotels and hiding and deleting messages. They are learning on the game. And so I am assuming that if the brother hasn't said he has seen it twice, then let's say that probably she's a beginner. Maybe it's the reason why she left the doors cry. You know, it, yeah. it, it's, it's, I'm, I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt because if you're really somebody who is good at cheating, you are careful. You don't leave yeah. traits. You will park your, your, your car behind exactly. the building so that people so will not assume is, anybody is there. It is something that the fire just started. Maybe it's a friend who came to visit and it is a moment of weakness. The fire just started and we took the fire, you know, upstairs. Because if the person is a pro, you'd have met it down there in the hall or in the kitchen. They are at liberty to do whatever they want to do. But if she had forgotten that, you know, gates are not closed at the time and all of that, it means that, Miss Nancy, let's not be hypocritical. We are humans and yeah. your hormones can shoot high above and you forget stuff. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Even though I'm a virgin. <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, yeah. Um, there's something OP Ada said about uh, the privacy something. Yeah. So what if the guy got there, knocked and shouted, and the woman realized that okay, fine, this there's, there's somebody at the door, and then mm-hmm. you lock up the man in the bedroom and then come and say, Oh, your brother is not around though. I'm even going out myself. Mm-hmm. And then he doesn't see anything. Or what if he come by and the door is locked? And maybe something is happening to the wife or the brother inside. Mm-hmm. And we said, Okay, because of privacy reasons, I will not even break the door, I'll not even go to something that you leave it and you go. And then something seriously happening there. The That's other- why <laughs> sometimes we allow our brothers to you know, have access. You understand? Well, because anything can happen. At the other and side also, of security why, is risk, right? Why should the, um, the brother wait for six good months? Hmm? Why should he wait for six good months? Because he had not reached out to confessions. Now he has. <laughs> good reason, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let me have Esther. Um, thank you very much, Miss Nancy. So, my first question for him is. Is his brother egoistic? The questions are three, as usual, right? <laughs> Today I have two. Two. Oh, yes. thank God. <laughs> so the first Number question one. is, is his brother egoistic in the sense that, you know, there are some people who have ego that, like Lady Pastor said, for all you know, even if you have evidence, he will not take it because he's like, my brother chanced on my wife cheating. Mm-hmm. How will he see me? He's like, I'm not treating her right. Maybe that is what has led her to do that. Yeah. Secondly, are the kids old enough to handle a separation if... That will be the results of the confrontation. Okay. Because if they are not, I'm not saying you shouldn't tell him, but I think you should also consider the kids in question. I don't know the number of kids they have, but are they he, old enough to handle that? He, I, I think that he's still here and he should answer this question. My dear. Yes, Miss Nancy. The children, how old are they? So the first one is seven, the second is five, and they have a two year old. Oh. The ages, Lady Pasta? Seven, five, two. Is it uh, a good time to experience your parents separate or divorce? Train up a child the way they should grow, and when they grow, they will not depart from it. So it makes it quite dicey, because um, what, what, what is the fear that the brother will not handle it well and bring them home? Mm-hmm. That is one side. Um, mm-hmm. spectacle. Another spectacle will say that the brother will say, because of my kids, I don't want to handle this matter again. When we want to do some of these things, the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Mm-hmm. If you have committed all these conversations to the Lord, he does the brick laying mm-hmm. and knows what kind of arrangement he's going to do for such a home. If you say, I'm keeping quiet because of the children. What if the children grow up one day and walk to see their mom do that? That is mm-hmm. if the person is a chronic cheater. Mm-hmm. It breaks their mind and their mentality so wrong, wrong. beyond separation mm-hmm. and divorce. Mm. What if a child sees that and decides to stab the other man at a very young age, mm-hmm. the person becomes a murderer? Mm. What if your brother sees? So don't. When we are doing this, it goes beyond your sentiment and how you feel. Yeah. I think you still need a prayer pill. If you have been able to speak to God about it and he gives you the wisdom and the go ahead and how to say it, he will lay bricks. It's either he's coming your brother down. It's either the woman is remorseful because I can say for a fact, hands up anybody who has been married for 15 years and said that my partner has never cheated. We are just two of us out of 10. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Mm. So it means that the longevity we even have in our marriages, mm. we have skipped these ramps. Mm. It is a test of where we are going. Mm. And so if you're not ready for some of these unforeseen structures to happen in your home, then I'm, I'm sure that the marriage journey you have not now, understood. cheating, does it always have to end in divorces and separations? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I just need to do this. Um, just because he slept with another woman, probably even with protection, just because she was loose with an old friend and she got overwhelmed and she didn't know what to do, she probably was drunk. You just want to throw away so many years of being together? Well, so... Does it always have to end in... What does the Bible say? It was a clause in the Bible that Mm -hmm. if a man is unfaithful to the wife, you can go ahead and divorce. But it also said that if you can clean your thing up Mm. and move ahead, it Mm. gives you that option. Mm. And 
the choices, one doesn't make one mature than the other. Yeah. There are people who can take it. Mm -hmm. They are tongue-speaking Christian, but their emotions are not in that level where they can look at you and say that you've done this, I've dusted you, and let's go. Mm -hmm. But there are also Christians who say that, well, I believe in the forgiveness. Look, I might be cheating, but you are also doing something else. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are pressing on to perfection. Mm -hmm. This is an institution that they gave us a certificate before we even got into got the school. Into we it. didn't know what is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So let's just, let's just press on and put Christ in the middle and let Christ work on all of us. Maybe 20 years down the lane, we'll look back and say, we did those mistakes when we're barely three years and we're finding our grounds. And we tell the children or we educate the children or we mentor the children when they face some of these storms along the way. Now, when they say they have forgiven, do they ever forget? <laughs> you know, there are men that would say, I've forgiven you, and then your daughter gets to the university and wouldn't listen to the parents, and the man starts looking at you. Are you sure this one belongs to me? So, so <laughs> men, women forgive and men don't forget. Women forgive and forget. No, but men women do. forgive, but men don't forget. Hmm. <laughs> women forget, but men don't forget. No. But when we forgive, do we forget? Um, our forgiveness means that there's going to be a periodic reminder of what happened. Yeah. So we're forgiving you. It's, it's, it's not in heart, so though, but but the, the playback is here. Yeah. <laughs> the playback is but, always there. Mm. Men don't forget because their minds are, are in a certain way. Yeah. A picture that is sticked in a man's mind is there. Mm. And again, why they don't forget is that they don't have the room of repeating the occurrence like women have. Yeah. Men don't repeat things that mm -hmm. happen over and over. They keep to their chest, yeah. you know, so it hurts them. But with, with women, once, once in a while, they will just throw it in your face. So you know. um, there is an aspect that I would want us to look at before we wrap up the show. The gentleman in question mm. who believed his brother was happily married mm. and probably saw them as role models for his future relationships. Mm. He said he's unmarried himself and he had the un, uh, unfortunate experience of witnessing a married woman cheating. What is the effect on this man? Well, it's going to draw a picture on his mind. Like I said, men don't forget. Things get stuck mm. in the mind of men for a very long time. But again, you cannot say I ain't going to drink a cup of water because once upon a time, River took my children away. Mm -hmm. Whatever God allows us to see or the devil throws at us, if the devil threw it at you, God has the capacity to design it for your good. Mm. If God allowed it, it's because he knows that you are, you are not using the capacity he, have, he has deposited in you mm. and you can go bigger and better mm. than that. I can say that just maybe he probably in his mind would have been a cheating husband. Mm -hmm. So God has given him a picture of how it looks like to be cheated. What it on. would be <laughs> if you were a cheating husband and yeah. one day come home to see what your wife has done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These things that he saw, it's neither for the it's for the wife, it's for the brother and for the wife, but it is more for him. Mm. And he's, if he's able to pass this test, I'm sure when we are looking for people who will sell wisdom nuts to the world, he should be part of he them. He should be part of them because, because of you his can't have the scene and, and you can't pass handling it and we can't call you wise. Now is the time that we get to know this woman. He going to confront the woman. Mm. If he decides that I'm not telling my brother, what is the conversation that he should have? with this woman so that he can rest assured that it would not happen again. Just listen to her. And don't listen to her with the expectation of she's going to tell me the truth. <laughs> so I tell, I say this. I, have the, I don't have the rights. You don't have the right to judge anybody. You don't have the right to point fingers. You don't have the right to understand all the time. But you have the right to listen to people. Yeah. And so exercise that right of listening. Mm. Let the person say to you a lie or truth. You have listened to it. And that is all. The rest is between her and God. Don't play God. Mm. If she wants to keep up, 
you have given her the benefit of the doubt. You did listen. You never know if he's able to handle it properly and over listening to the woman would increase her remorse never to do that again. Yeah. Mm. And so just listen. I always will say that you just have to listen. Just listen to what she's got to say. Okay. Well, just about wrapping up on tonight's edition of Confessions. And uh, this young lady says she's got something to say. Hi, Miss Nancy. My name Hello. is Sandra. I want to tell the man that since he has seen that, it doesn't mean that's how every woman or every lady is. Mm. Because sometimes we hear the, the guy say, women are wicked, women are wicked. Daughters of Eve yes. and sons of Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm saying that because it does happen. Yeah. Someone will be like, because I saw this happening, this lady doing this, I'm not getting married. Or if I get married, to, if I get married, I'll never it, trust it's my like, partner. Yes, you never trust your wife. Even mm -hmm. if, if she's telling you the truth, be like, no, that's how ladies are. So mm -hmm. I'm not taking what you are saying. So what I want to say is that he shouldn't treat every lady as a cheater. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good one. Thank you very much, Miss Nancy. Mm -hmm. So what I want to say is uh, to, the, to the gentleman is that now it's like Brookwood actually is like uh, two sides of a coin mm -hmm. in the sense that you can have things happen and you, uh, you wouldn't want to tell your brother. You can have things happen that you need to tell your brother. Yeah. So him personally, not unmarried for now, yeah. and he, as, as he journeys on in life, he should have that open mind, reorient his mind that bro code is two sides of a coin. So he should have that open mind and open heart. Yeah. <laughs> well, my lady, your last words and we're out of here. All right. So I'm just going to take my, my life principle again. We don't have right to judge. Mm. We don't have right to throw a stone at anybody because they did wrong. That is to the woman and even to the man that we don't know. But we have the right to listen and we have the right to stand as an intercessor for them. And so I think nothing ends in this life without prayer for me. So, um, bro, you are a good guy. Let God help you. And whatever would happen, everybody needs an intercessor in their marriage. Make a conscious effort that for... Miss Nancy's marriage, I am her private intercessor. She doesn't necessarily have to know that I'm praying for praying your home, for but I'm her. praying for your home, mm. that things mm. will fall into places. Yes. You don't have to know what is happening, but I'm praying for your home. Yeah. That is either, if God wants you to be together, he'll keep you together. He'll turn the stones around and make sure that the past mistakes don't come back again. Because once upon a time, Rahab was a prostitute and mm. then later joined into the lineage of Jesus. Yeah. People change. Yeah. People change. Absolutely. And so just be in the corner, be vigilant, support them in prayers, and hope that it will go well. I am glad that right here on Confessions on TV3, we get to talk about all these issues of life. Whilst we are still in the Ghana month, let me take the opportunity and speak my mother tongue. For all you know, that woman that is cheating is coming from a home where a husband has been sick and unable to attend to her for many years. But out of love, she has kept her home. For all you know, this woman out there has been asked by her husband, who probably is in a certain situation, to seek the help from somewhere. Oti Obia Sema, Ayasusuka. Miss Nancy Confessions on TV3. Good night. <laughs>